Hey, this is Mark with the Practical Steel. We're going back to the bottle on the Stranahan's cast strength single barrel, single malt, with a lot of, lot of singles in there. Cast strength single malt, uh, single barrel whiskey. Um, this one was a shocker, I gotta say. Um, I, not that I don't like the regular Stranahan's. I mentioned when we did the open the bottle that I, I like it okay. It's, it's um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a deep, rich flavor, uh, but it's good flavors. Um, and um, this one is all that plus a bunch. So this is cast strength at 111.51 proof. It's a single barrel chosen by a total wine here in Colorado. Um, and it's just fabulous. I, I still don't know to this day if these single barrels get any older than the, uh, the original, the, the, the non single barrel version, um, which are supposed to be two to five years old. But this one's just fabulous. We did the uh, Stranahan's tour and, and true to form, you know, the yellow label original was okay. The Diamond Peak, that black label, uh, really liked it. Um, and that sh the sherried version is good. Uh, but this one, to me, just knocked me out. And it really brought me back. It was kind of one of the reasons I got back to open up a bottle of scotch recently. Just because having a single malt, you know, 100% malted barley, um, kind of got me back into that thinking. And, and this is fabulous. So unlike scotch that has to be aged in uh, used barrels, this goes into new barrels. And just like a, you know, a new charred oak barrel, just like a, a bourbon or a rye whiskey would. Uh, and that makes a big difference. Um, I think the flavors are fabulous. Um, it, it's one of those things that um, it was good right off, but it certainly grew on me. And I think that um, oddly with this one, a little water actually seemed to heat it up a little bit. So I like I like ended up liking it better neat. Um, but I, I certainly encourage you to try it because that's one of the beauties of a cast strength whiskey. Um, and these are unfil unchill filter too. So as is the original. Uh, but that's one of the beauties of a, a cast strength whiskey. You get to play with that uh, proof point and find it where it's just right for you. Ultimately, it ended up being, uh, for my palate, that I like it neat right out of the bottle. Um, it's, it's, it's good. Let me see if the same things hold. But when I first drank it, had made notes early on, um, it was uh, dark sugars, kind of stone fruits or plums or that kind of uh, flavor to it. And it really, I think if I had tasted it blind, I'd have been a little confused because it, it really tipped me off like a Speyside Scotch would, although you can tell there's just a lot more going on because of that new barrel. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's sweet. It's, uh, it's peppery now. It's been open, as you can tell, it's been open a while. Um, peppery on the front, but you still get those, those dark fruit notes. I just think it's excellent. I'm really glad. In fact, what's cool is it's kind of serendipitous. I didn't buy this bottle. I want it in a charity event. So had I not done that, I might not have ever bought one of these single barrel cast strength versions just based on the fact that I wasn't super enthusiastic about the regular strand of hand. So I'm, I'm really happy that happened. Um, I will buy more of these for sure. Uh, if you are an American whiskey drinker and you're thinking about should I try some single malt kind of action? Because the single malt scene in the U.S. is going crazy. Stranahan's is, I guess, the oldest and probably the, still the biggest. Uh, I, I say, yeah, I, I encourage you to give it a try. It might be the stepping stone to go over to Scotland if you haven't tried some scotch. And what I'd suggest is if you do that from here, a great step into Scotland is a Highland or a Speyside malt. Uh, and give that a try. Because, I, again, I think if this is blind... I'd have been a little confused. That's that's awfully flavorful for a relatively young whiskey, uh, but it tastes like scotch, but it's not. So it, it's American single malt. So give that a try. I think it's great. If you're in Colorado, for sure do the tour. The, the distillery is a neat place. Um, and, you know, we like it here because it's a local thing. Um, and, and by the way, I did make a, uh, what what is a Rob Roy, and I don't know what to call it because if you make a, a Manhattan is rye or bourbon with sweet vermouth, a Rob Roy is scotch with sweet vermouth. This is not a bourbon or a rye or a scotch. I don't know what to call it, but I did make whatever that is with it. It was delicious. So uh, I think it's great. I think you should try it. They aren't expensive. I think this is a $50 to $60 bottle, depending on which store picks it. So not outrageous. Um, and for sure, give it a try. Maybe it, maybe it leads you into more American malts. And, and look, if you do that and you have some opinions about those other ones you find out there, the Westlands and other people doing the malts, um, you know, hit us, uh, put some in the comments and let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on these videos and let us know if we're doing them right. Cheers.